Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I would like to call the meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. If uh, Mr. City Clerk, can you please do roll call? Councilor Mertamayo? Here. Mayor Brotem Peralta? Present. Councilor Member Jimenez? Here. Council Member Melendez? Here. Mayor Torres? Okay, Mr. City Attorney, can you please announce all closed session items for today? Yes, thank you very much, I'm Madam Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council. Any member of the public who wishes to address the items that are listed on the closed session agenda should have filled out a card and made that request at this point in time. Uh, this time it's the uh, public comment period for closed session items only. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, do we have any cards? We do not have speaker cards for closed session. Thank you. Uh, then we'll move into closed session. Item A, which is concerned residents versus City of Montebello, uh, I'm asking uh, Madam Mayor that matter be held over. Uh, there are still ongoing uh, conversations between uh, the respective attorneys and parties to this litigation, and uh, we have not had uh, further resolution, so I'm going to ask the council to consider holding this over. Or actually, I'm asking it being pulled unless there's any objection by the city council. Uh, item 1B, which is uh, the Navarro versus City of Montebello uh, litigation matters. And then item 2 is the public employee appointment consideration. Uh, that concludes my announcement of closed session. It's appropriate to recess into closed session at this time. Okay, we will be recessing into closed session at 6.06 .06 p.m. Thank you.
reconvening the meeting today. Um, Mr. City Attorney, can you please provide us a report for closed session items? Mayor Pro Tem? Oh, can you give me a second? Yeah. Can you please confirm that we're live? Okay, I am reconvening the meeting at 6.50 p.m. Mr. City Attorney, can you please provide a report on closed session items? Thank you very much, Madam Mayor Pro Tem and members of the City Council. Uh, the record should reflect that the City Council convened in closed session uh, with four members present. Uh, Council Member Jimenez was present uh, via telephone. Uh, the Mayor is uh, not present, is absent this evening. Uh, and the following is my report. Item number 1A, as mentioned uh, prior to recessing into closed session, will be held over uh, to another date. Uh, item 1B, uh, the Navarro versus City of Montebello various uh, workers' compensation matters. Uh, the City Council received a briefing by, from uh, the workers' compensation attorney. Uh, there was uh, direction provided to uh, the attorney uh, regarding possible resolution uh, and that was unanimous by the uh, City Council. Uh, item number two, which is the public employee appointment matter uh, related to the City Manager. A briefing was provided to the City Council. A direction was provided, uh, but there is no uh, action taken uh, by the City Council that requires reporting at this time. Uh, that concludes my report, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, it's appropriate to continue with the open portion of the meeting. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. City Attorney. And for our invocation, we will have our city clerk and Pledge of Allegiance will have our city treasurer. So, Mr. City Clerk. As we gather here today, we pray that we are ever mindful of opportunities to render our service to fellow citizens and to our community, keeping in mind always the enduring values of life exerting our efforts in those areas and on those things upon which future generations can build with confidence. Let us continue to strive to make a better world. We ask this in thy name, amen. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, do we have any um, state, any changes to the agenda? Yes, Madam uh, Mayor Pro Tem, at this time I'd like to advise that item number 10 has been uh, tabled to a future meeting. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to presentations. Um, today we would like to recognize Hilda Michelle Placencia Flores, a Montebello resident and special education teacher at Cameron Elementary in West Covina for being one of the honorably selected winners of the Walt Disney 100th Anniversary Teacher Celebration, which recognizes 100 exceptional teachers who reflect the creativity and imagination of Walt Disney to attend a one-of-a-kind teacher event. Ms. Placencia Flores has demonstrated an unwavering spirit reflecting the creativity and imagination of Walt Disney himself. She understands that each child is unique and tailors her teaching methods to meet the specific needs of each student. Being selected as one of the winners of this prestigious celebration is a testament to Ms. Placencia Flores' excellence as an educator. She had the incredible opportunity to, to attend a one-of-a-kind teacher event and well-deserved recognition for her tireless efforts and transformative impact. So on behalf of the city of Montebello, I extend my heartfelt, heartfelt congratulations to Ms. Hilda Michelle Placencia Flores for being selected as one of the Walt Disney's 100th anniversary teacher celebration winners. If we can have my colleagues, please join me in the front so that we can welcome her up. Can we please, is this on? Can you guys hear me? Yes. If we can please give Miss 
um, Hilda Placencia a big round of applause. So it's with sincere pleasure that the mayor and the city council recognize Hilda Placencia for being one of the honorably selected winners of the Walt Disney 100th anniversary teacher celebration. Through their creative and imaginative approach to teaching, Ms. Placencia provides an educational environment that not only engages, but inspires the children of her classroom. Again, with heartfelt wishes, we congratulate you and award you and wish you luck in your future. Yeah, you want to bring up your family? Don't be shy. Thank you for all that you do for our community. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to. This month is Parks Make Life Better Month, and I believe we might have some Parks and Rec employees here today, so if I can welcome you guys up, you deserve a big, big round of applause. So July is also recognized as, as Parks Make Life Better Month. Parks promote the building of strong, vibrant, and resilient communities through the power of both parks and recreation they offer that maintain and operate our country's local, state, and community parks. Montebello's Recreation and Community Services Department's mission is to strengthen community through people, parks, and programs. The department accomplishes this goal by providing rewarding programs, services, and facilities to enhance the quality of life for Montebello residents posit and positively influence the public. Staff are committed to strengthening Montebello's image and offering a sense of community, thereby supporting economic development, increasing public engagement, and prom promoting health and wellness. The department staff includes seven full-time and more than 50 part-time staff who oversee all operations at 10 different parks with more than 84 developed acres that annually serve more than an estimated 1.5 million park visitors. Recreation department staff also provide the community with year-round recreation programs for people of all ages and abilities, and on average see 3,500 recreation program registrants, 200,000 plus senior center participant visits, and 60,000 total attendees over the course of 11 annually community-oriented special events. And so July is Park Month, but we know that this extends year-round because these incredible um, staff members are always out there at every event, setting up, breaking down, um, in, in engaging with our community. And so I do want to recognize, um, I think some of our community members have called him Mr. Parks, but Director <laughs> Sosnowski and his incredible staff for just being so committed to engaging with our community and just making Montebello a better place. So this proclamation uh, will be for you. And we can get a round of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And then I'll read the next one up there. I'll read the next one up there. Okay, and lastly, we have Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. Older adults are not, only the, are not the only people affected by arthritis. Children can suffer from it too. Did you know the term juvenile arthritis was first described as far back in the 1700s by pediatrician Frederick Still? Did you also know that, children, um, that in children, arthritis can affect not only jo joints, but also organs too? Younger immune systems sometimes attack their joints, causing swelling, stiffness, and even permanent damage, which can get worse if left untreated. This is why July is designated Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. Nearly 300,000 children and teens in America have been diagnosed with arthritis. Juvenile arthritis, or JA, can affect children of all ages, races, and backgrounds, and is an umbrella term used to describe the many autoimmune and inflammatory diseases that can develop in children under the age of 16. That means that the immune system, which is supposed to fight against foreign invaders like viruses and germs, gets confused and releases inflammatory chemicals that attack healthy cells and tissue. In most JA cases, this causes inflammation, swelling, and pain. There is no cure for juvenile arthritis, but early diagnosis can help relieve pain and improve a child's quality of life. Your voice adds strength to the fight by spreading the word in hopes of finding a cure and getting the right treatment. Understand juvenile arthritis better by visiting arthritis.org for more information. And that concludes our presentations for today. Mr. City Attorney, can you please read the statement of oral communications before receiving public comments? Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, these are public comments to non-agenda items. Anyone who wishes to address the City Council at this time on non-agenda items, uh, would be, uh, fill, should fill out a card this, uh, by this point in time and turn into the city clerk. Um, and do we have any requests for public comment? Yes, we do. Proceed with the speakers. Yes. First speaker is Rosa Tamayo, followed by Julio Ma Matamoros. Buenas noches. Good evening. Yo soy Rosa Tamayo. My name is Rosa Tamayo. Y soy una activista comunitaria. I'm a community activist. Y buenas noches a ProTeam a Mayor Scarlett Peralta. To Pro Team. Salvador Meléndez. Salvador Peralta. Concejal. Concejal Salvador Menendez, Tamayo. Council Tamayo. Y Los ausentes, Jiménez y... O no están ausentes, ¿verdad? Porque están Jiménez, escuchando. Uh, Jiménez y, absent, el, y el alcalde um, David Torres. And David Torres. <coughs> Quiero decirles que Mayor. estoy muy contenta porque eh, la celebración de independencia de, de, del 4 de julio I want to say that I'm very happy for the celebration of 4th of July. Um, me di cuenta que el señor David Sonoski y su equipo. I noticed that uh, uh, David Sonoski and his team. Estuvo muy excelente. Was excellent. Um, el parque muy limpio. The park was muy bien very atendido. Clean. Very y well también attended. por Y también por um, las autoridades de Chief um, also de los Bomberos, Peláez, the y, chief, the, uh, fire department. y el Chief de uh, Seguridad de nuestra 
a Ciudad, a security, Chip Espinosa, excelente. Security team, Espinosa, excelente. Yo me tuve que retirar porque tenía otros compromisos. I had to go because I had other matters to do. Uh, nomás quiero decirle... Uh, uh, just, uh, I just want to say... Uh, mm, Mayor Pro Team Scarlett Peralta. To Major uh, Scarlett Peralta. Que me he dado cuenta que usted como que se ha movido de asiento porque... I, ha I have noticed that you have moved to the seat. Eh, leí en sus labios que... Are, are reading, porque yo leo labios. I read in your lips. <coughs> porque aprendí por la sordera. I, I learned the, due to deafness. Y que usted tenía... Miedo a el concejal Jiménez. That you are uh, intimidated by. Um, Pero no by le tiene que Jiménez. tener, no, no le tiene que tener miedo. You Ella have, tiene alto sentido be, de la justicia. You don't have to be intimidated uh, uh, because uh, she has a uh, um, good uh, sense of justice. Y quien usted tiene, tiene tiene que tener miedo es al FBI porque uh, ellos tardan FBI. pero ellos hacen su trabajo muy bien They do their job very well. Um, la concejal Jiménez no es agresiva ni peleona Council Jiménez is not aggressive yo la conozco or, de tiempo I know her for a long time. y solo le quiero decir I que just, usted es I just want to say, um, concejal Peralta, you, uh, Consul y Peralta concejal Tamayo, Consul Tamayo y el alcalde and the major, el alcalde David Torres, David Torres ustedes votan haciendo crímenes municipales you are uh, voting uh, by creating uh, uh, municipal uh, crimes Haciendo que la ciudad pague millones por sus abusos de poder. Making the city pay millions by your uh, abuse of power. Como ustedes no saben lo que vale el dinero. Since you don't know what the uh, money, the value of de money, de los those taxpayers. No les importa, no tienen respeto. You don't care, you don't have respect. Por los empleados. For the employees. Y todo tiene su consecuencia. And everything has uh, uh, its uh, consequences. Traigan mejores uh, negocios Bring donde la gente pueda trabajar. Where people can work. Para así estar nosotros contentos con ustedes. So that uh, we can be happy with you. We all could be happy with you. Y dejen de estar um, quebrando los derechos civiles de los empleados. And stop... Uh, Uh, breaking, uh, ignoring the, the rights for the Muchas employees. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tamayo. We can call up the next person. Gracias, Señor Tamayo. Good evening. Uh, my name is Julio Matamoros. I am a board member of the Rocky Mountain Two Association, and um, <clears throat> they've asked me to come and speak on behalf of them. We've been having some issues with a uh, person living in their RV that is parked uh, next to our association. And um, we're concerned about this because he's there all day and um, he has uh, sometimes become belligerent. Uh, my wife, uh, our dog got out. My wife went looking for our dog, was calling our dog's name out and he told her to shut the F up. And this is because uh, he was asleep and this was at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, um, We keep asking him to move his, his RV, uh, to find another place to park it, that it's a residential neighborhood, but um, he keeps just moving it down the street. I've called the city uh, several times, parking enforcement, but all he does, all they do is tell us that they, if he moves it within a certain amount of time, there's nothing they can do about it. So our concern is that um, more RVs and more people are just gonna start showing up and parking and then our city is going to turn into downtown Los Angeles. So that's something that we're really concerned about because we're seeing it happen in Pico Rivera at the Lowe's parking lot, and uh, we don't want it to happen in our, in our neighborhood, in our street. Uh, another issue we're having that uh, <clears throat> we've been raising with, uh, 
with the non-emergency line is uh, a lot of people have come up to Racket Mountain too and uh, have parked their cars and uh, just started uh, smoking marijuana, drinking, having sex, um, and discarding their food um, packaging on the streets. Uh, we call uh, the non-emergency number and sometimes they show up, sometimes they can't because they're busy, but um, we're asking for more police patrols up there because again, they just sit there, uh, they park their cars facing down the hill with their lights on, so people that are driving up the hill have to see their lights uh, facing them when they shouldn't. And I've gone outside and uh, other homeowners have gone outside to confront these people and ask them to either stop what they're doing, uh, move on, and either they'll become uh, confr you know, confrontational with us, um, and uh, we don't want to you know, take things into our own hands. So we do call the police uh, again, but you know they're busy and there's nothing they can do, so we ask that uh, something can be done to, to address this because we have to deal with the consequences the next day. They leave beer bottles, beer cans, food wrappings, everything on the street, condoms, used condoms on the street, and uh, you know it's, it's not what we want our neighborhoods to be up there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matamoros. Um, Ms. Salazar, maybe we can have our, our chief uh, receive his contact information and follow up. Thank you, Chief. Next speaker is Alexandra Briceno, followed by Linda Nicholas. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and council members. Um, I'm here before you. I know you. Um, they pulled item 10, but it will come back, so I might as well speak on it. Uh, it looks like now we have to pay for five years worth of security or surveillance invoices. Five years. We have to pay since 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023 for security. Uh, I don't understand how... Um, you know, the, how we fall behind so badly on, on sort, this sort of stuff for, the, for these facilities. It, it resembles very much what happened when the city wasn't aware that the hotel operator didn't get paid for 11 years and the delay accrued over $1.5 million. This is a repeat story. It happens over and over again. And then I think it was less than a year, a few months ago, uh, our COVID relief money given to us by the federal government was given to the golf course or the hotels, out of that facility again. It's a money pit. We keep throwing money there. It's a sole source contracts, 15 year long contracts when your terms are only four years. This isn't right, you know? And so, and then he's got a perpetual contract for the food and beverage. I think it's gonna end in 2064, so maybe it's not perpetual, but it seems to me. Please, let's make sure we don't pay interest on this five-year invoices for security because it's not our fault. They didn't bill us. Um, another thing I want to bring up is city finance st staff should be aware when regular invoices are missing, and they should proactively contact the vendor and ask, hey, you know, why aren't you sending us your invoices? Because these are regular reoccurring invoices. Invoices, they shouldn't be a surprise. Also, at the end of the um, city's fiscal year, extra extra funds on hand should raise a red flag. Are there items we didn't pay? These red flags should have been in front of us. Also, every quarter, our finance director presents the budget at our city council meetings, and he gives us figures about the Quiet Canyon, the hotels, the golf course. Four times per year, how was this missed? How, how did we miss it? Do we need to probe deeper? Do we need to ensure that, do we need to write a municipal code saying the finance director needs to tell us, because he wouldn't tell us if we were making profit, he would only mention revenue. Do we need to say, you got to tell us if we're making profit, you have to tell us if you're paying the management fees, now you got to tell us if we're paying the security fees. We shouldn't have to be seeking this information, we shouldn't be surprised like this with these invoices coming out of thin air, it's just crazy. So let's do something to prevent this. Uh, let's please be more careful with our city's money and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Brisenia. Next speaker is Linda Nicholas. 
Good evening, Linda Nicholas, address on file. Um, I agree, I'm tired of our city money being spent. I'm still asking why we paid the $429,000 of grant money that we didn't know. Infrastructure who gave you and Torres and you under the table money for your campaigns, 20,000 to you. From the AAE, the old business that was under indictment with the FBI, remember that name, and infrastructure, another 10,000. Why didn't we get them to pay that money back? They were paid that $429,000. They were caught committing fraud. Can somebody give me a reason why they weren't told to pay it? Do we have, I'm looking into legal action. As a city treasurer, you're supposed to be taking care of our money. Have you asked why they paid this? We didn't know it. Infrastructure got paid $429,000. They were the ones that committed fraud. They can no longer do any work for Caltrans, yet you guys hired them back, which means we will not get a single grant money that has involving Caltrans because you hired them back. But we know you have self-serving interest. You were bought and paid for. Thank you, Ms. Nicholas. Mayor Pertem, that does conclude all speaker cards for public comments. Okay. Um, Mr. City Attorney, can you please read um, the statement of approval on consent items? Oh, wait, actually, reading the wrong page here. Um, yes. Okay, Ms. Salazar, can you please introduce those items uh, of community interest? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. At this time, I'd like to invite our community to our Summer Street Fest. It's happening this Saturday from 2 to 10 o'clock on uh, Whittier Boulevard, um, starting at Montebello um, Boulevard next to the Wells Fargo building. We encourage all our families uh, to come out, families and friends from the region. Um, we have uh, a lot of great food that will be there, vendors, informational booths, um, some great bands uh, throughout the day, so we invite our community to that. And prior to that, uh, tomorrow night we have our uh, farmer's market. We encourage those to uh, visit us behind the uh, St. Wells Fargo building at Montebello at Whittier Boulevard. And then next Tuesday, I'd like to invite um, our community to the National Night Out event at Acuna Park right behind the police station from 6 to 9 o'clock for the National Night Out event. Thank you, Ma Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you so much, Ms. Salazar. Um, up next, we have a public hearing. This is item six, uh, the first reading and introduction of ordinance number 2464, amending the zoning designation um, for the properties located at 608, 612, and 616 Hart Place to allow the construction of 16 residential units. Do we have um, a presentation? No presentation, Mayor Pro Tem. However, Director Palombi is here to answer any questions, and it's at this time appropriate to open the public hearing unless the council has questions. Okay, I will go ahead and open public hearing at 718. Is there anyone who wishes to address the city council on this item, this public hearing? Would be appropriate to step forward if there's the applicant who wishes to make a presentation. If not, anyone who wishes to address the council in support of the project? Is there anyone who wishes to step forward? The record should reflect that no one has stepped forward. Is there anyone who wishes to uh, speak in opposition to the uh, application? Again, uh, the record should further reflect no one is stepping forward. It would be appropriate, uh, Madam Mayor, pro tem, to close the public, public hearing and bring it up to the city council level. Okay, I will be closing public hearing at 719, and uh, we'll bring it up for council um, discussion. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Oh, I'll make a motion to approve the item. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay, can I please have roll call? Councilor Matamayo? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Peralta? Aye. Councilor Member Jimenez? He's not on there. Council Member Melendez? Aye. everyone. And that passes with three ayes um, and two absent. Next we have item seven, which is a public hearing to consider adoption of resolution number 2361 confirming um, 
the year 2023-2024 engineers report for the annual Natasha Lane Landscape Assessment District number 2051 and levying such assessments. If I can go ahead and please open the public hearing at 720. Again, Ma Madam Mayor Pro Tem, is there anyone in the audience with, that wishes to address the City Council on this public hearing item? The record should reflect that no one is stepping forward. Be appropriate to close the public hearing and bring it to the council level. Okay, I will be closing public hearing at 720. If I can please ask for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, can I have a second? I second. And Mr. City Clerk, can I please have roll call? Council Member Tamayo? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Peralta? Aye. Council Member Melendez? Aye. Okay, that passes with three ayes and two absents. We have now number item number eight, which is also a public hearing to consider the adoption of resolution number 2362, confirming the 2023-24 engineer's report for the annual Natasha Lane Sewer and Stormwater Pump Assessment District, um, number 2005, two and loving such assessments. I believe we don't have a presentation, so I will go ahead and move forward with opening uh, the public hearing at 721. Again, on this public hearing, is there anyone who wishes to address the City Council uh, on the adoption of the resolution uh, number 23-62? Uh, Madam Mayor, pro tem, the record should reflect that no one is stepping forward to be appropriate to close the public hearing and bring the matter back up to the City Council. Okay, I will go ahead and close public the public hearing at 721. And I will go ahead and, if there's no questions, I can go ahead and ask for a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. Okay, can I please have a second? I second. Um, Mr. City Clerk, can you please do roll call? Council Member Tamayo? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Peralta? Aye. Council Member Melendez? Aye. Okay, that passes with three ayes and two absent. Um, this leads us to consent calendar. Mr. City Attorney, can you please uh, uh, read the statement of approval of consent items and um, ask Council if there are any items that need to be pulled for discussion, as well as um, if there are any public comments on any specific items. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, all matters listed under the consent uh, calendar are considered to be routine. Any item a member wishes to discuss, discuss including any items the public submitted speaker cards for should be designated at this time. All other items may be approved in a single motion. Such approval will also waive the reading of any ordinance. Uh, item 10 has been pulled. Do we have any speaker cards on consent agenda items? No speaker cards. Thank you. Then uh, if I may uh, poll the council starting, so th this is for items 9, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. uh, council Member Tamayo. No items. Uh, council Member Jimenez. Council Member Melendez. No items. And Mayor Pro Tem Peralta. Items 9 and 11, please. 9 and 11. Okay, so we need a motion to approve item 12. I'll make the motion. I second. Okay, can we please have roll call? Council Member Tamayo. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Peralta. Aye. Council Member Melendez. Aye. Okay, that is three ayes and two absents. Um, Mr. City Attorney. Yes. Uh, item number nine has been pulled by the Mayor Pro Tem. This is consideration of approval of amendment number one to agreement number 3990 with Shack Enterprises doing business as Montebello Tire Pros and authorized payment of invoices. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, thank you. So um, I do have several questions. I'm not sure if it's appropriate for um, Ms. Salazar or one of our directors. At this time, I'd like to invite um, Director of Finance, Michael Solorza. Depending on what questions, we can answer them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Director. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So specifically with this item, um, I want to understand currently what are the existing maintenance services that are being provided? I know we have Ford, Chevy, and Tire Pros, um, three different uh, companies that we're working with in regards to the, our fleet maintenance. So just trying to understand what are the different types of maintenance services um, that Tire Pros offers the city, um, and then just trying to understand as well uh, what specific types of fleet vehicles are they 
are they servicing that uh, Ford and Chevy or not? Yes, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. So it, the focus is kind of is the preventative maintenance of our vehicles. So um, rotating tires, new tires, um, oil changes, those kinds of relatively minor preventative maintenance. I do know it, with some of our older vehicles, um, as we're replacing them out, you know, they still might need some major work and we'll take them to, to Montebello Tire Pros. What we've done in the last couple of years is expanded kind of our bench and which is why we're also, we also have a, a similar contracts with Chevy that, that's in town, the Chevy dealer in town and the Ford dealer in town to bring some of our vehicles there. Um, obviously with police, um, they have the, the, the Ford Interceptors, they still have, they have some Chevy Tahoes, I think they're still a Chevy Caprice in service. Um, and as available, we'll take those to the Chevy dealer. But the reason we have the three now is the point is to try and keep all of our vehicles maintained properly and available. And so depending on, on need, depending on availability, we'll take them to one of the three, uh, um, whether it's the two dealers or for tire pros. Okay, um, can can you provide as far as like specifically the type of fleets that Tire Pros is um, maintaining, if, and if there's like a percentage of um, of current vehicles that cannot be uh, serviced at Ford and Chevy that are being serviced at Tire Pros? I don't have that level of detail with me right now, but that is something that that could be could be gotten relatively easily. Yes. Okay, so that that's. I asked that for more context simply uh, because the projected expenditures for vehicle maintenance in the 2022-2023 were uh, at 85,000. However, the amended agreement today is proposing an increase of 75,000 to 175,000, um, which is an increase of about 133% um, of the cost. And so for me, um, just you know, wanted to understand that such a significant uh, increase considering that we recently uh, replaced and purchased new vehicles. Theoretically, I think that should reduce um, need for such significant uh, increases. Uh, but if at a later time, council can, if uh, staff can just follow back up with council in regards to just the types of, of vehicles and fleets that uh, Tire Pros is specifically um, is, spe is specifically servicing, just to understand why we have such a significant increase from seventy five thousand to one hundred and seventy five thousand. Um, also, staff was informed about outstanding invoices from Montebello Tire Pros totaling $28,600. And then I believe from what my understanding is council approved that payment. Um, following that, there was another notification of in, in, unpaid invoices totaling $128,000. Um, do we have the projected expense, expenses of the 85,000 for tire pros um, in the 2022, 2023. Uh, is that included in those unpaid invoices? See if I can. So the, these invoices that uh, are, are in front of council right now for approval will hit the current year budget, 23, 24. Mm -hmm. So, uh, hence, the request to amend the budget to uh, be able to pick, cover those uh, older invoices. Got it. So the yeah. projected the projection of eighty five thousand does not include the the invoices that we received later down the line. Correct. Okay. That is correct for the for the current fiscal year twenty three twenty four. Okay. Yes. Um, and then just trying to understand, does the city currently use any software to track expenses related to individual vehicles, especially considering that we have, as mentioned, older vehicles, uh, 20 to 25 years old? Um, is there any way that, is there any software we're currently using in order to track uh, these expenses and costs for maintenance? I am, I, I know in transit, fairly certain, um, They'll use the, they use software. I, I'm unsure what we use for our other fleet or non-transit fleet. Okay. Um, so since I pulled the item, um, I will recommend approving, uh, seeing that these are unpaid invoices. Um, and I think it's just with the understanding that moving forward, 
as a city. I know there was a public comment made earlier about a different item, but we should be extra vigilant um, to avoid any accumulation of significant amount of delinquent invoices. To have, I think, $140,000 in invoices be delinquent, um, you know, I think is uh, concerning. Um, and to just better uh, track our financial management and per prevent any type of budget amendments as we see today, um, I do encourage that uh, we have a more reliable type of uh, tracking system to be able to monitor those schedules, uh, track expenses, uh, maintenance, and costs so that we're ensuring um, a just more cost-effective approach moving forward and not having to continue um, uh, being off on the projections, projections and having to uh, increase uh, um, the, the amounts there. So with that, I will go ahead and motion to approve the item. Can I please have a second? I'll second it. Okay, Mr. City Clerk, can I please have roll call? Councilmember Tamayo? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Peralta? Aye. Councilmember Melendez? Aye. Okay, that passes uh, with three ayes and two absences. Um, and then, Mr. City Attorney? Yes, uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, the next item is item number 11 consideration of approval of the minutes for June 14th, June 28th, Council Meeting. Okay. Um, yes, just want to note that there is a mistake in the June 24 minutes, uh, specifically on page 596, where it says that um, the mayor made the motion to adopt item 8. It should be amended to read that uh, the mayor requested a motion to approve the item with the following recommendations based on statements by council. Um, this matches the tally of votes immediately uh, that follows uh, that Mayor Pro Tem and myself actually made the motion to approve the item. So just the, the language uh, needs to be shifted that uh, Mayor Torres requested a motion to approve the item based on the following recommendations um, on statements made by the council. And so since I approved that, uh, pulled that, I will go ahead and um, uh, motion to have that amendment um, uh, a, part of the, a part of the item. I'll second. And to approve the, the minutes as amended. Yes, and to approve the minutes as amended. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. And can I have a second? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I motioned, okay. Um, so we have a motion by myself, a second by Mr. Melendez. Mr. City Clerk, can you please uh, provide roll call? Councilor Member Tamayo? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Peralta? Aye. Council Member Jimenez, uh, sorry, Council Member Melendez. Aye. Okay, that passes with three ayes and two absences. And we are, no, yeah. So we have travel reporting. Um, do any of my colleagues have any reporting on their travels? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Melendez. I just want to report, I did attend the Naleo conference um, held in New York uh, with the majority of my colleagues. Um, great sessions. We had a affordable housing session that was really good, a mental health. Um, also, something that uh, intrigued me too was um, uh, digital currency in uh, municipal government. So uh, we'll see if we go there. I don't know about our finance director what his opinion on that is, but there's a conversation going there. So. Uh, but, uh, but overall, great, great uh, conversations, great topics, and um, great, great conference overall. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilmember Tamayo. Yes, for me as well. Um, I attended the Naleo conference. Naleo is the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials. Um, so this conference had representatives from our neighboring cities, but as well um, from the nation um, and other states. Uh, other states were represented. We had workshops and discussions that encompassed issues such as housing, infrastructure, workforce development, and um, political and politics at a federal level. And actually, Montebello was represented on the national stage. Um, if you know the current administrator of the U.S. Small Business Administration, her name is uh, Isabella Casillas Guzman, and she's on the Biden administration, and she's um, a graduate from Sher High School. So it was great to see Montebello on the national stage, so and a great opportunity. Thank you. 
Um, thank you so much, Council Member uh, Tamayo. I myself also did attend Naleo. It was a really incredible conference, a nationwide conference where we got to meet uh, Latino electeds from all across the state, from Arizona to North Carolina. Um, and that was very interesting to be able to uh, network and just uh, learn best practices from electeds uh, across the state, being able, across the nation, being able to see uh, some of their uh, issues and policies that they're currently working on in their respective uh, jurisdictions. Um, I did do the nuts and bolts of a budget, um, and it was a really great presentation and, and really advocated for um, the use of, or the advocated for more public engagement within our budget approval process, which I know is something that um, our council is really working towards and um, definitely having uh, more ideas as the incoming budget um, next year uh, to, to be able to implement uh, some of those tactics to be able to uh, engage more of our residents and provide more of an educational component to understanding our budget. And um, that concludes my AB one, uh, 1234 travel reports. Uh, before we do adjourn, I would like to request a moment of silence uh, for um, one of our residents, Anna Solis. Um, in the wake of a devastating incident, um, our hearts are heavy as we mourn the loss of a cherished member of our community, Miss Anna Solis. She is a native of Montebello. She was a proud, mighty Euler alumni and served as a drum major. Um, Anna's presence in our community was multifaceted. Not only did she reside here, but she made significant contributions through her musical endeavors. She founded the band The Crimes um, and graced us with unforgettable performances while actively engaging throughout various roles in our community. Uh, tragically, Anna's life was cut short at 21 years um, in a hit and run accident late Friday evening in downtown Los Angeles. Her boyfriend speaks of her with profound affection, describing her as a beautiful soul, and her legacy will forever be remembered for the love and beauty she brought into our lives. Her passion for music and, vibrant, uh, and the vibrant Los Angeles scene was evident to all who knew her. She was selflessly uh, always helping others whenever she could and poured her heart into any musical opportunity that she had. On behalf of the city council and the entire community, we extend our deepest condolences to Anna's grieving family and loved ones. Um, so before I, uh, we adjourn, I would like to take uh, a moment of silence to honor her memory. May Anna's spirit and love um, of music continue to inspire us all. Uh, I, on my social media, I do have a link um, that goes towards her family's GoFundMe to help with funeral expenses. I encourage those that are able to make a small contribution um, to please do so. Um, with that, can I please take a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Okay, and uh, we are adjourning to our next uh, regular meeting on August 9, 2023 at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m., which can be live streamed at our website. And that concludes our meeting today. Thank you so much.